What up, guys? Mall reviews, baby. Time for another review. We do have uh, another epic sample. This sample is a uh, one ouncer from uh, the Whiskey Exchange. Hopefully, I'm holding this at the right angle and you guys could see. Um, it's Brora 30 year old, the second release from the Diageo specials. Yes. In 2003. 2003 release. This is the 2003 release, so that's 17 years ago. Yep. Yeah. Long, long time ago. 30 year old Brora. These earlier releases of the Diageo specials, they have more of the younger 1970s style of Brora. And Brora would be a, definitely a distillery that the the vintage, the year, it really varied Big time. quite a bit. Big so time. you're going to get quite a bit of a different style from these younger 30-year-olds than you are now with the 37, 38-year-old, 35-year-old, 34-year-old. Right. Um, in my opinion, these have such a unique farminess to them that the new ones do a little bit, but not quite like this. Right. Um, Just not, not quite as, as magical. Not quite as magical um, as these ones. We have reviewed the 2007 release as well on our channel. Now we're going to do the 2003 release um, yes, sample. Sir. Yes, sir. And as you know, the best vintage of Brora is 1972. No, so, yeah, young 1970s, but right, 72 right. is famous. Right, 72 yeah. is so, famous. so famous. So you're getting some of that in there that you're not going to get from the older ones, exactly. The 38, 37, yeah. etc. All right, we've got a nice golden color here. Obviously, natural color. Oh, I did not mention the ABV. Oh, it's tell me the ABV. 55.7% yeah. ABV yeah, so at beauty, 30 years old. Yeah, so all those Diageo releases, cask, strength, natural color, the good stuff, baby. This has been breathing. This is a whiskey that, um, with the complexity that these whiskeys have, yeah. I guess I, I'm like tempted to, because we just kind of freestyle our notes. We don't, you know, prepare for the review in any way. We treat the review the same way when we're just hanging out, having a whiskey night, and we're chatting about whiskey. And we decided to run the channel that way, not be like super, super professional and write down all the notes. But this is almost a whiskey where I almost wish I wrote down the notes because I know I'm going to miss so much yeah. as I've just been sitting here over the last 20 minutes nosing it, knowing all these things that, that this whiskey has. It's, it's, it's going to be hard to just kind of repeat. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. You almost want to want to write stuff down to kind of get your thoughts together because it's that mind-blowingly complex. And a, as a lot of these broaders are. Let's... Let's hit the nose though, so we don't bore everyone. Yeah. Yeah. What you expect from these ones is, is that that big farminess, the what they're what it's known for, the cow stables, the grass, the dirt, the mud, seaweed. And the biggest thing I get, and it's similar to the, the 07 as well, but just the these cask strength 30 year old broras the the texture of the nose is just so fat it's so fat and thick and waxy so all of the extra alcohol is going right to flavor right to aroma it's right all to flavor depth. there's no alcohol like when you say no fat right away i'm thinking bacon it's got this baconiness that's to what it i mean it's it, it's like this certain it's almost like you have like a mouth feel it's like a nose feel texture that's so unique it's insane and it's and oh. all all those like farming notes that i said what it's kind of known for you know the wet dog the cow stables the grass yeah. the dirt that like that but there's and then there's that like bacon fat element to it that fattiness the yeah. waxiness it's like, so like oily. almost like greasy yeah greasy like bacon, oily bacon, thick bacon, bacon, candles greasy, yeah. wax but what makes it so so magical is I'm saying those things, a lot of those things sound off-putting. They but sound it's like, what, so is that good? much sweetness and tropical fruits. Oh, yes. cool. That's a given. And, yeah. and, and, and you combine all that, the complexity. it makes it so magical because you're getting like sweet pineapple, you're getting um, oh, orange marmalade, mandarin marmalade, like mandarin, I say mandarin because mandarin is sweeter than orange. It's almost like the marmalade of mandarin. It's you're getting yeah. so much pear and I, would, I was going to say apple. I was going to say on that note, like 
like those sweet luscious like Seville oranges, yeah. like you know, like a sweeter orange. But yeah, so, oh. pineapple, mango, but the sweetest, like soaked, most luscious, juicy version of it. Pineapple candies, you know, like pineapple candies, man. It's so so yeah, luscious. Yeah, like, like sweet, sugary covered pineapple candies, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Pears and apples. Orange, the mandarin, very crystallized. Oh no, yeah, good, good point. Like, do not, we should not understate the quality of the fruit in there. Just that, yeah. that, that broad farminess is so. Well, that's what makes that. it so unique. So is you're, unique. you're taking these sweet fruits, you're combining it with that farminess, yeah. the seaweed, and all that. Uh, like you're at a farm, and then you take that waxy and fatty quality fat, like that bacon great, fat great right bacon, yeah. and then you do so it's like combining those three things and there's a million other things going on yeah. in here right secondary flavors yeah tertiary flavors but i guess what it is is like even if you just have the fruits on their own yeah that would be a certain level right yeah, yeah. but then you're adding points 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 with the other notes yes. the other worlds of notes yes and and the it's 80, mind blowing and the 55 percent is just all going into flavor all flavor amazing oh it's truly something that everyone who's really really into whiskey should try absolutely because it's yes. so different so it's truly different. the one whiskey that's so uniquely different yes so whether you're like a sherry head you know all sweet or a smoky peat head you have to try this it'll blow your mind very unique we well, can keep going so, but I think we yeah, explained it like, explained it the right way so unique yeah. though I'm going to hit the palate. Let's do it. I mean, once you try it, understand it, when you say like that brora farminess or like that broreriness, you'll know what it means. Yeah. Hit the palate. Okay. Greasy, all flavor, no alcohol at all. Wow. Same as the nose. Oh my god. So that's luscious. I get wow. Less of the fruit on the palate, you get it, but a lot more of the farmy. Oh yeah. More of the peat, more of the ocean, more of those like sardines and yeah. and oysters and tons of that farm. Tons and tons of that farm. But, but so much wax, like in the waxy, the waxiest texture yeah. possible. Yeah, yeah. Wax and mouthfeel, fat, greasy. I can imagine that. Yeah, farm like that crazy. This could definitely take some water. Speaking of water, I'm going to be using. Um, Jeremy. Cheers to Jeremy from Social Sippers Club. Cheers. Who sent us this water dropper right here. Thanks, brother. And Thanks, we're gonna man. Be, we're going to be using it. I'm going to put two drops, yeah. two measure drops water. of water in there it's gonna lower it and perhaps open it up a little bit more so excuse us that we're taking our time with this review um it is just one ounce so you really want to get the full enjoyment out of it and we want to let this water really open right. this up so it might be a one-shot deal so we want to make it as good as possible get the full experience of the dram While we're kind of letting this water integrate, I would say just comparing it to the to 2007, the other one that we reviewed, oh. um, this one on the palate comes off quite a bit more uh, farmy. Yeah, but more of that unique Brora. Yeah. The other one has that, but it's a little sweeter on the palate yes. than this one. Yes, much more tropical fruit forward. I also know when you let these guys open up, that sweetness comes out that's, more. That's also uh, true. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if uh, the whiskey exchange opened the bottle and poured the sample, or if it was open already. You don't really, you really don't know when you're just doing a sample. Yeah. But you know, and that that's always the risk. Obviously, you want to own a full bottle of everything. Yes, but it's like. Yes. Would you rather at least try but it? But even, like like some people say, you shouldn't review samples. Like Even when you're doing a full bottle, depending on where you're reviewing that 
that bottle, it's going to be different. Your review is going to be different anyways. Are you doing it a month after? Are you doing it two months after? Are you doing it a year yeah. after? It's going to be different anyways. But the unique part is you do get to experience the full bottle. Right. And you can maybe bring that up and talk about it. So it makes it more more of a complete yeah. complete review. Because I, I remember, the, remember the 2007, the first time we opened it, the biggest thing was like that fresh crystallized manure with the farminess. And that was more like forward that way. But as you let the air breathe yeah. and go through, the tropical fruits exploded, yeah. you know? Yeah. So who knows about this one, like yeah. you said. Who knows? But this is it's so magical. It's so yeah. special. This doesn't make it any more or less magical, I think, on the nose with two drops of water. If anything, that, that sweetness comes out a little bit more. The fruits come out a little bit more. But it was just coming out like crazy to begin with. It's kind of the beauty of these guys, you know. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you're not getting you're not getting any alcohol bad effects. So like even if you don't add water ever. Like well, gonna, the, yeah, just open it up and, and, and get new flavors yeah. from. Man. I mean, it's like it's, so, it, like it wasn't closed up at all, you know. No, 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 not at all. Well, we did let it breathe for a good thirty minutes too, but yeah, it wasn't closed up at all. Yeah, you see the little air. Damn. Dude. Wow. Just magical. Let's hit the palate. I'm curious about the palate with a little more water. Let's do it. Mm. More of the sugar, tropical fruits coming out more, more sweetness. Mm. Wow, yeah, barley sugar. More and more, exactly. Nuts. Getting more of that barley. <laughs> yeah. Malty. Mm. The malt cereal notes. Malt sweet cereal, cereal notes. Sweet. Damn. That is nice, man. Yeah, it's very, very nice. A lot, of, a lot more of the fruit coming out with water. I'm actually going to do one more drop of water Good idea. for my third sip. Yeah, just because it changed it quite a bit with the palate. Yeah. As it should. Super complex whiskeys at cask strength with a little bit of water definitely change. Dang it. Mm. This is man, awesome. Man, that pineapple candy, that though. That pineapple man. candy, dude. Yeah, it's like a certain like few notes that really, really shine. You obviously got the Brora, the wax, fat, greasy, but yeah, the pineapple candy's going nuts. It's just the combination of the of the of the oh farmy pea stuff, yeah, man. with that fatty waxiness, oiliness, and then the, and then the sweet sweet fruits. It's just when you combine those three, is what just makes it so magical. Hard to find, yeah, especially, hard to especially find, especially today, <laughs> yeah. It's almost is gonna sound weird. It's almost like how we like we always yearn for the old uh, Bowmores and the Froigs, like the peat candy with all the mm -hmm. fruits and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's almost like farm candy, you know? Yeah. It's like instead of the peat candy, they got this whole Brora like sweet crystallized farminess going on with all those great fruits. So hard to find these days. Amazing. These, Last these set. were great releases, man. Last set, yeah. Wow. Oh, it takes water well. It takes, it takes, it takes, did that. It takes water well. It takes water well. It's such a, such a long finish. A lot of like sweet citrus fruits, like lemon. On the palate, it's not like, you don't get a lot of that sweet, sweet oh mandarin, God. but you get more of like sweet lemon and grapefruit, citrus. pineapple, a lot of that farm. A lot of seaweed. Earth. Waxy. Bacon, yeah, earth. I mean, even get in fatty, like, waxy. Earth, like mu mushrooms and crazy truffles, like both black truffles and sweet white truffles, like nutty complex. Man. Yeah, very, very good. It takes water very well. Lingering and lingering. Good call. Oh, endless, endless finish. Wow. Endless. Oh, Damn, B. Yeah. So, the way I would score this. And again, it's just off a sample. Oh my God, what a full bottle. Um, yeah, and a full bottle. <laughs> what a full the score, bottle, The score might change by a point. I, would, I, I very much doubt it would change Damn. more than that. It would stay the same. So, got to experience this beauty. On the nose for me, it's a 94. On the palate, it's a 93. 
I'm going to go with a 93. That does not mean that if I had a full bottle and I experienced it from beginning to end, that it wouldn't go up to a 94. But 94 sure, sure. nose, 93 palette, for me, I'm going to leave it at a 93. So I guess like a 93 and a half. But again, it's in that 93, 94 range. Yeah. Uh, just incredible. Right around the same same level of quality and score as the 2007 for me. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought I almost assumed going into it that this was going to blow my mind, like points higher than the 2007. Yeah. But it really, it shows me how good the 2007 is as well. Impressive. Yeah, yeah. No, I would say, I would say same, uh, yeah. same range of quality. Pretty same. Yeah. I'm going to go... In this moment right now, I'm getting 94 for both. I'm going to go 94 on it. Yeah. I'm going to go 94 on I mean, it. It's right there in that it's range. right there. It's yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just, you know, when we do these scores, it gets very technical after 90 points. Yeah. There's so many whiskeys that I have in reference in terms of enjoyment and technical quality, right? right. There's a technical quality when you're scoring. You're analyzing the whiskey in that end. And there's your own personal enjoyment too, you know. Most of the factor in terms of goes into goes into the technical element, and you have to factor in a tiny bit uh, right. of of your own style and enjoyment as well, of course. Right. Um, but yeah, just unbelievable whiskey. Hope we didn't talk too much and you guys get bored. I'm sure long reviews like this where we're just rambling on get kind of boring for some people. But right. it is a brewer, a thirty year old. You got to talk about it. It's it's stunning. It's epic and um, it's very special. Though. Yeah, everyone who's really, really into Brora, I mean, everyone who's really, really into whiskey, needs to try an early seventies yes, Brora. Brora. It's something very unique. Even if it's not your favorite whiskey of all time, it's something you should absolutely try. Yeah, it'll open your eyes for yeah. sure. All right, subscribe if you guys haven't. Comment below. Appreciate a thumbs up and.